Hi, you are welcome to His Gov TV. Before we begin with today's discussion, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel, share our links, and also um, comment. If you have any question on the lesson, you comment or you write it on the comment section and the team will be willing to assist and help you with your question. In our last um, lesson on CRS, a Christian Religious Studies, we looked at the Christian story and we learned about the first account of creation that was a priestly account. And in case you missed that lesson, I have the link in the description under this video. So you can go in there and then uh, click on the link to watch that video or lesson before you come to watch this one because that um, lesson is a continuation of this one. Now, by way of reminding ourselves of what we learned in our previous um, lesson, we learned that there are two um, creation account stories in the Bible, specifically in Genesis. And we did say that the first one was called priestly account, that's the first creation account. Then the other was called the Javist or the Javist account, the second um, creation account. And we did say that the priestly account was written by a priest, and that is why it is called the priestly account. And then we also said that the Javist or the Yahweh account also was written before the, um, the division of the kingdom into northern and southern kingdom, Israel and Judah. And so today we are going to learn about the second um, account of creation or the second story on creation. And so today, our subtopic is going to be the second or the, or the Yahweh's or the Jarvis account of creation. And we will take our a Bible text from um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 to 25. And that is where we are going to um, concentrate on. So I hope before we begin, let me just ask you, or I hope you have your Bible by your side so that um, because we are going to do much of Bible reading, because Wayek um, suggests or recommends that teachers um, take students through the Bible um, step by step so that um, students will be able to answer the objective questions well. And so in my class, we will read the Bible word by word and then explain them for you to understand so that you are able to answer the section B, uh, sorry, the objective um, test very well. Good. So let's take a look at, um, uh, yeah. So let's begin with our objectives. So let's take a look at our lesson objectives. So our lesson objectives for today, one, would be that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to narrate the Yahweh or the Javis or the second account of creation. Right? So you can be asked to narrate the Javis or the Javis or the or the second account um, creation story. You should be able to do that by the end of this um, lesson. Let's take a look at the other one. Our next objectives will be that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to also describe the creation of the Garden of Eden. So when you are asked, and I know this garden is very famous in your mind, when you are asked to describe the Garden of Eden, how the Garden of Eden 
was created, I am very sure that you will be able to um, describe how the Garden of Eden was created. And again, you should be able to describe the creation of man, how man was also created. And man here could be either woman or man, all right? So how man was also created. And these are going to be our um, lesson objectives. Good. So let's begin with the Javis account of creation. Even before we go into the Bible to read about the Javis account um, creation, let's take a look at some um, summary here before we go in there. Now, in the second or Javis account of creation, there was existing landmarks. Okay, existing existing landmarks before creation. So, you 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 recall that in our um, previous um, lesson, we said that the earth, according to the Bible, the earth was without form and void, which then means that there was nothing on the surface of the earth until God's spirit was moving on the on the face of the earth. And so, but in the second creation account, there was an existing landmarks before God came in to create. And so after God had created um, heaven and then earth, man was the first to be created. And so when we read Genesis 2, verse 4 to 25, which we will do very soon, we will realize that man was the first um, um, creature that God created after heaven and earth was made. All right? Good. Now, after, I mean, man was, was then created, according to the second account, man was created from the dust of the earth. Remember, all these things were not said in the first account story. Because when I finish, I will give you a work that you should uh, differentiate between the first account and the second account. Now, you, you, you realize that in this account, the second account, man was created from the dust of the earth, which was not stated in the first account. The first account just said, let's make man in our own image. And that's it. How man was created was not described for us. But in the second account, man is created from the dust, the, earth, the dust of the earth. Again, we said that after God created man from the dust of earth, of the earth, he had no place to put man. And so what God decided to do was that he then created a garden known as Eden. Okay, so the Garden of Eden. Now, he created the Garden of Eden and placed man in that garden and instructed man to keep and till or to till and keep the land or the garden. All right? And then we will look at that. So this is just a summary. Now, after creating the garden, I mean man and putting man in the Garden of Eden, then he realized that Man was again alone, and so he created the animals and also birds of the air to give man company in the garden. All right, and then the next thing then he God created was woman because he saw that the animals and the birds that he had created all were in pairs. However, man was alone. And so God created woman. And we will go into the Bible and look at how God created man. And so you see that in this story, in this first account, how woman was created was not mentioned. God even just said, let's create man. It, did not even, it, it wasn't even specific as we are seeing it in this account. Again, God then instituted marriage. So the institution or the marriage institution was also created after God had created woman 
to be part of man. And so God commanded man, of course that is woman and man, to procreate and fill the earth. That was how the institution of marriage was, 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 was created by God. Okay? Good. So this, I mean, what you have here is just a, a summary of what we are going to read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 to 25. So, also bear in mind that in the first account, or the priestly account, you saw that God was creating the world on each day. So a day, first day, second day, third day, were all ascribed to the various things that God created. However, in the Javist account, there are no days ascribed to God's creation. So we are not even told the number of days that God used to create yet. Okay, so let's go into the Bible and read Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 to 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 to 25. Let's go in there and see something for ourselves so that we are able to answer both objectives and the section B and question well. Good. Now, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 2. So I have my Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 over here. So read your Bible along or you can watch the screen as I read with you and explain. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. So yes, there was an existence. Heaven and earth was already in place as we have learned it here. However, what the Bible is saying here is that there wasn't any help. Nothing was on the on the on the face of the of the of the earth. So no plant as we've seen it here and no help. Why was there no help and plant? Basically because God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And so the earth had no plant or, or help. And you know, plant uses, if you learn science, they'll tell you that plant uses water to grow and all of that. And so, and there was also no man to till the ground. So you realize the earth is there. It, it, it wasn't like the first creation account whereby the earth was without form and void. No. The earth is there, but there is nobody to, uh, to till and there are no help, there are no plant because it has no rain. So what then happens is that, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So now God caused rain to fall so that the ground will be watered for help and probably, um, uh, I mean plants to grow. Then because there was also no man to till the land, God had to create a man. Then. The Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living being. So you see, so then he formed man. Take and look at this way. Formed, if the Bible is for you, you can underline. Formed man out of the dust. I mean, have a picture in your mind's eye. Forming a human being from dust. You know, it portrays God as what? As a potter. You know a potter? Like somebody who, who, who uses clay to form, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, creatures, you know. So you, you see that here God is being portrayed as a potter. This is in direct contrast with what we learned in the creation, in the first account story. God was not uh, a portrayed to have formed, but he just said, let there, let there, you know. Now, and he breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So you see, man did not even buy the breath that we breathe. The breath that God breathed into man's nostril was life, which then means that God can also take that same a breath at any time. Do you understand? Yes, and that is why we die, you know, and we stop breathing, because God has taken 
that breath away from us. Don't also forget that it was that breath of life that made man to become a living being. So when that breath is taken away from you, you cease to be a living being. Now, then there was a problem as to where to keep man. So the Lord God planted a garden in Aden, in the east. And this, I have seen a question, an objective question, who said, where, where was the garden of Aden uh, located? Which area? It was in the east. All right? So don't forget, underline that. And there he put the man whom he had formed in the garden, in the east. And out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we are now on the, the creation of the garden of Eden. So you see how God is creating the garden of Eden? He placed man in there. After placing man in there, then he made out of the ground to grow every tree. So he planted the tree, the vegetation, and co. But interestingly, God placed a tree of life in the midst of a garden of the garden and also a tree of knowledge of good and evil in that garden and even look at here he says sight and good for food so the trees were to be were to provide us with food don't forget in the first account in the priestly account we said that god intended man to be a vegetarian it's almost like the same here a similarity over here so these two trees were planted in the midst of the garden. Underline them, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Good. Now let's take a look at this. A river then flowed out of Eden to water the garden. And there it divided and became four rivers. And these uh, four rivers to are questions that they normally ask students of. Take notice of the names of the four rivers that watered the Garden of Eden because there are plants now, there are herbs, and so there should be a river that will water them. Now, let's take a look at the names. The first a river is known as Pishon, and it was the one which flows around the whole land of Havila where there is gold. So the first river is Pishon. So underline it if it is yours. And the gold of that land is good. Uh, bedlium and all stones are also there. Now let's take a look at the second river. So take notice of the names of rivers. The first river is Pishon. The second river is called Gihon. And it is the one which flows around the whole land of Kush. So the Gihon is a river that flows around the whole of the land of Kush. And the name of the third river is Tigris, which also flows east of Assyria. And the fourth one is called Euphrates. So underline the names of the rivers, Pishon, Kihon, um, Tigris, and Euphrates. These were the four rivers that watered the Garden of Eden. We are still on the, on, the, on the creation of the Garden of Eden. So then he creates four, I mean, he creates a river, which divides into four, to water the garden. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden to till it and keep it. I like this word, till it and keep it. So then there's leave it like that yes you can farm yes you can mine the gold yes you can do whatever you want to do with the land however you should what keep it and this is where i had issues the last time we met in our in our in our other lesson that today we are not i mean keeping the land even though we are tilling it but we are not keeping it we are destroying it kalamse uh, illegal fishing and all of that are destroying the land and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For the day that you eat of it, you shall die. This was a commandment that God gave to man, that eat every plant. So you see, in all both accounts, God did not instruct man to kill an animal and eat. It's all about eat, freely eat of every tree in this garden so then where from we killing animals to as food to eat but interestingly god tells man not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil 
And he said the day that they will eat, they will die. They will die not in the sense that they will die a physical death, but spiritually, they will die. And what happened next is, is a story for another day. Then the Lord said, It is no good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper, fit for him. So he realized that it was no good for man to be alone. So we are now moving on to the creation of woman. How woman was created. He realized that it was not good for a woman, a man to be alone because he needed a helper. So women were created in the minds of God to be helpers of man. Okay? So helper fit for him. Helper fit for him. Don't forget, not all helpers are fit. <laughs> so helpers fit for him. Okay? Good. So in future, when you grow up and you are marrying, make sure you get a helper which is fit for you. But you see, so out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird. So now he creates the birds of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. So here, God commands man. I think this was not also in the first account. God, I mean, creates all the animals, bring them to man for man to name them. So what does that imply? It means that man was an ambassador of God on earth. Man represented God on earth. And therefore, man was given the power to name all the animals. And the name that man gave to those animals, God never changed any of them. That was its name. Up to the date, it is still man that gives name. And so even if you look at our traditional setup, when one gives birth, you realize that it is the man that is required to provide a name for the child. So the woman should know this, that you, don't, you can't take it from man. It, it, it is divine. It is something that God has created. Okay? Good. So let's move on to verse 20, right? Whatever the man called the living creature. Like, yes, so verse 20. The man gave names to all cattle and to the bears of the air and to every beast and the food. But the man... But for the man, there was not found a helper fit for him. So you see, so now we go back to the creation of a woman. So the Lord caused man, so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. So we are looking at the creation of Eve. While he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. Um, is that an amazing picture? Have, have a picture of that. Have a picture of that. God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. Then while the man was sleeping, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. So imagine your rib being taken out. It means that your, that, that side of your body will be cut open. And then after the rib had been removed, then you must close it back. And God did that with what? another flesh and this is where we say in this account god is being portrayed as porter not porter alone but a surgeon if you not surgeons who cut open humans and close them with the flesh yes so amazingly some people say god was the first um surgeon or doctor and the rape which the lord god had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man and brought her to the man to give name to the woman so even women it was man who gave names to women all right now the man said this at last is my bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man so woman the meaning of woman is because Woman was taken out of a man. 
So you look at wood and then man. Two words over there. Wu man. All right? Good. Now, therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves with, uh, to his wife and they become one flesh. This was the institution of marriage. So the last thing that God created, you leave, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh. Okay? And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Both naked but were not ashamed. So, this was how God created the Garden of Eden. We will not go into the others. Alright? So, let's go back to our slides. Okay? Let's go back to our slides. Let's go back to our slides. Let's go back to our slides and see. So I have already explained all of this. So you see that the, the verses that we read, that is what I had um, summarized over here. So we saw how God created man out of the dust. We also saw the creation of the garden, the rivers in the garden, and then also animals that were created again, then woman, how a woman was created, and also the institution of marriage. Good, good, good. So, so that was basically the creation, the second account of creation, the Javist account. Now let's take a look at the creation of the Garden of Eden, one after the other. And so that, you can find that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 17, you can find out from, from that the creation of um, Adam. Uh, of course, the Eden. Okay, you can find that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 17. Now, look here. He says, God created the Garden of Eden and placed man in it. We have already said that already, right? Yes. Now, no vegetation. Why were there no vegetation? I said, because it had not what rain until a mist, okay, watered the ground. And I have, I have explained this already. God then planted what? trees for food so again we are reminded that we are supposed to be a vegetarian now in the middle god planted the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and what evil and instructed them not to eat now these were the four rivers that flowed through the garden of eden the first river was called pishon the second uh, river was called Kihon, the third was called Tigris, and the fourth, last one was called River Euphrates. Now, again, let's take a look at the creation of woman. So according to the Javist account, the creation of a woman was the last thing God created. Do you agree? Yes, I know you do agree because that is what we saw in the last one. Now, God caused Adam to a deep sleep he created woman from the rib of what man. All right? Good. And Adam gives her a name. Adam calls her what? Woman. The name is what? Woman. And what was the meaning of woman? I hope you, you remember. And why was God, why was a woman created? Okay? Why was a woman created? And I, these are, the answers are in your Bible. So please... Go into your Bible and uh, go and find out the answers. All right? Good. Now let's take a look at some of the comments. I have already made some of them, but let's take them one by one. Okay, so the story portrays God as a porter. You agree, right? Since God formed man from the dust of the earth with his own hand, porter, somebody who who makes you know, things with dust, you know, those visual art students, you see the kind of work that they do. God is portrayed as a porter because he created man from there. Now, when you look at the second account, the Javist account, you see that man was the center 
Man was the center of God's creation. So man is giving so much, you know, uh, man is giving so much power. Everything is evolving around man. All right? So man becomes the center of God's creation. Now, again, man was given the privilege. Man was given the privilege to name God's creation. This means that we are the representative of God on earth, ambassadors of God on earth. Now, what was man's purpose in the garden? Man's purpose in the garden was to till and keep it. But the question is, are we tilling and are we keeping? Yes, we are tilling, but are we keeping? Adam called his wife woman. We have already said that because he was taken out of a man. So when you are asked for the meaning of woman, it simply means he was taken out of man. Now, Adam's wife was called Eve because she was the mother of all living things. So he later, he called him Eve. And the Eve means the mother of all living. All living. Now, the breath of God in man means life. It means life is a gift that God can also what? take away. The last thing that God did was that he instituted marriage. Okay, marriage. And it suggested a heterosexual marriage, not a homosexual marriage. And this is where the world is getting it wrong. The kind of marriage that God instituted, he did not create a man and woman, a man and man and told them to get married. Or and told them to procreate, or uh, and told them that you are going to be his helper. He did not create a woman and woman and said that you are going to be her helper. No, it is man and woman, heterosexual. So all those gunning for homosexual, whatever, they don't know what they are talking about. Now the last thing that will bring our discussion to an end is that we are seeing that some scholars say that the Garden of Eden is a mythological or it's a myth. Mythology. Myth in the sense that it does not exist. Um, the story is just a frame up story. Um, it does not exist. There is no garden called Eden. That is what some people are saying. And so I know you will be curious, you will be asking, so say, um, where is the garden of Eden? Where was it? Was it on the earth or it was in the sky? Let me give you this clue. There are so many, so many, um, 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 school of thought on the on the location of the Garden of Eden. However, what I can tell you is that um, you know, in the creation of the Garden of Eden, certain landmarks were mentioned, certain um, rivers' names were mentioned, even certain areas, names of areas like Kush, like Havila, and Co. were mentioned. The issue is, if you want to find out whether the Garden existed, it means that you should go and look out for the landmarks. Now, the four rivers that flow through the Garden of Eden. We have only discovered two of them as Tigris and Euphrates, the third and fourth river, which is located somewhere in the Middle East. When I say Middle East, I'm talking about Baghdad area, uh, Iraq, uh, Jerusalem area, the Israel area there, and specifically Baghdad. That's where the two uh, rivers are found currently today, Ta uh, Tigris and Euphrates. But the uh, Pishon and Kihon, we don't know. There is no river in the world called Pichon and Kihon. And that is where historians are finding it very difficult to come up with the existence of the Garden of Eden. All right? So, the conclusion we can draw is that if the Garden really existed on Earth, then possibly it should be in the Middle East. All right? Nowhere other than the Middle East. So let's take a look at these um, questions. Try our hands on them. Now, let's try our hands on this. Okay. Uh, state any three differences and similarities in the two creation accounts. So three, three each, three differences and three similarities. So look for the two. And three human activities that degrades the environment. And then three ways human can also uh, contribute to cause creation. All these are past questions. So please. Uh, take them seriously. Subscribe to the channel. Ask your questions in the comment section and we will meet some other time. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Scott TV. Flash of all equals. Bye.